Hello my Poker Padawans and TBU fans alike. Welcome to my week three team analysis for our Battle Union match against the Meath Mama Swines and Potato Team. So, this is a bit late, just a wee bit. Uh, match is already done. So this is kind of like a relook over the team analysis. So, you know, bit of a different, bit of a different guy over, but it is what it is. So Week three against Jim. Uh, he's got a pretty, pretty intimidating looking team. He's got a few obstacles for us to, for us to get over. They, they, were, they were quite hard to plan for, I'll be honest. And uh, I don't feel like my team building was quite the best this week, but I, I did what I could. Did what I could in the time that I had. So I'll quickly go over Jim's team. He had Mega Agron, which is a nightmare to plan for. Latios. Flaugus, Shaman, Terrakian, Rotom Heat, Mesprit, Pangoro, and Porygon Z. So, straight off the bat, I needed to concentrate on a small special side because that's the only way I could really hit Mega Agron. Because due to its filter ability, you can't hit it super effectively. And that thing has got bulk coming out of every, every orifice in its body. So, I needed to try and make sure I had something to hit it on the special side because Agron, Mega Agron's special defense is nowhere near as good as its physical defense. I knew for a fact if I tried to break it down on the physical side, I'd be there all day. So, I needed some hard hitting special attacks for one. Uh, Flaugis was a bit of a problem because I don't really have much of an answer for fairies. Um, Shaman, I wasn't too worried about Shaman. It can be a can be a pain, but I had responses. Terrakion was kind of a needed to get rid of it as quick as possible because it's a hard hitter and with the right setup or in the right scenario, it could just sweep my team. Rotom wasn't really worried about. Mesprit is a bulky pain, especially if it wants to explode and set up a hazard because I wasn't bringing any removal this week. Uh, Pangaro is just scary. And Porygon Z can be a problem if you don't deal with it right. And Latios, of course, is powerful in its own right and can do quite a few things. So that was Jim's team. So I'm going to go over now what I brought and why I bought it and some such and things like that. So the first member of the team for week three that I bought was Red the Latias. Now Latias was kind of my Latios response. Um, I was hoping it was going to help with Mega Agron as well. And uh, Rotom Heat. Because, as I say, I needed something to hit on the special side, to do a lot of damage on the special side. And I needed it to be as fast as possible to aim to beat the Latios, as long as he wasn't running Scarf as well. Because then I think it's a speed tie, I think. I mean, it would have been it would have been a complete loss if he was running Jolly Scarf because I'm modest. So we've got modest red, uh, 252 in special attack of speed, choice Scarf. We've got Draco Meteor for that as much power as we can get with that setup. Uh, Psyshock's there to deal damage on the physical side of things, such as Flawless, unless of course it's physically defensive. Um, obviously you can't go one on one with it because it will just take us out with moon blasts. And we've, got, we've also got Ice Beam is there for a bit of, bit of neutral coverage. I mean it hits, it hits Shaman as well. But um, it was just kind of there so that I've got something else to click. Instead of the uh, Draco Meteor all the while. Because Draco Meteor is only really good for one use. And then you're kind of screwed because your special attack goes down so that's not really something i want to be locked into if i can avoid it i've also got the scarf healing wish on there if you know if i should if i should have come across a scenario where i've got a powerful hitter that's really weak that i want to bring in so we could go for a scarf healing wish get that particular mom back in at full health and then just go from there so that was the thinking behind Latias. The second mom on the team for week three was 
uh, it was Chanel number nine. Now Chanel number nine, Aramitis, did good work in week two, putting up a good fight against uh, Trip and his bulky Mew. Uh, did quite well against his other bulky threats as well. I mean, it was tanking hits from the Tang Growth, which had the Sludge Bomb to kind of deal with it, but not. Uh, it, was, it was taking on Umbreon as well, it, but it was carrying aromatherapy, getting rid of Toxic. So yeah, Aromatis did really well week two. And I wanted to bring it again this week. We've got the cost that berry again. Because that priority Moonblast will really come in. Now the thinking of the logic behind the Custat Berry was so that we could go kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with Pangaro. Because Pangaro runs, I think it has Iron Head. I think it also gets poisoned, yeah, big Iron Fist, you know, pack it with a life orb or a choice band or something. I wanted to be able to take on Pangaro, kind of kind of. See, the thinking was one-on-one, -on -one, Aromatisse and Pangaro. Pangaro hits Aromatisse, doesn't quite kill it because of his bulk. We live and then the next turn we get a Custat Moonblast off. So, great. I mean, the Custat would have given me a, a, a possible switch in to Pangaro as well. We could switch in, take a hit. Custat would pop the next turn, get a priority Moonblast off and hopefully take out the Pangaro as long as it's not a Salt Vest. Um, so that was the thing behind that. We've got split defences because Jim's got things on both sides that I don't really want to take on. I didn't really want to leave myself open to exploitation from either Porygon Z, Florgius or Rotom Heat or maybe, Sh maybe Shaman depending on what he brought. So I didn't want to leave myself open and exploitable on either side of the defensive spectrum. So I went max HP and then I tried to split the defense. It's got slightly lower investment in the physical defense, but hopefully that, that was cushioned by the bold nature, which boosts defense by 10 points. Uh, got protect is there to kind of scout, kind of. Uh, got a moon blast as well. Wish for the recovery and aromatherapy in case any of his mons want to play nasty shenanigans with the toxic such as Florgius or Shaman. So that was the thinking there. I mean obviously this can't take on Agron. Moonblast does nothing to Agron, so this this is nowhere near my Agron response. Latius kind of could do stuff to it with Dragon with Draco Meteor, even though it's resisted. But uh, yeah, so anyway, Chanel number nine. Kind of our defensive mon this week. So yeah, that was a remedies. Next mon on the team, coming back again, is the Winged Terror, Aerodactyl. So Aerodactyl did good work week one. Didn't do so well week two uh, because of that unlucky crunch, not kidding. We got scolded to death. So that was kind of unlucky, maybe a bad play on my part as well. Um, but I need to, I need Aerodactyl this week because he's got a lot of things on his team that could really hurt me and will outspeed a lot of my defensive mons as well, particularly if they run Scarf. So I need something fast and strong to take down those threats. Now the main one I was looking main ones I was looking at here were Terrakion, Rotom Heat and Pangoro. Florgis as well, you'll probably notice I kind of tried to cover in the set. And we've got Unnerve to stop anything, popping any nasty berries in case it wants to, just to be safe. We've got Stone Edge. A nice, sto uh, nice rock type stab. Iron Head is there to take on Florgius. Crunch is there mainly to hit Mesprit. Mainly to give us something to hit Mesprit with. Uh, we've also got Aqua Tower. Now, that I know what you're thinking. If you're worried about Terrakion, why aren't you running Earthquake? Because we are choice banned. I did not want to lock into Earthquake and leave myself open to a Rotom Heat Switch. See, the thinking was here, I'd switch it to Aerodactyl, you know, be it on a, a sack or something else, or however it would work. I'd bring in Aerodactyl on the Terrakion. He would expect me to go for an Earthquake, switch into Rotom, but I would click the Aquatail, which hits Rotom super effectively, and then it also hits Terrakion super effectively. I mean, if this thing was doing like an endgame run, Aqua Tower makes a lot of sense to click as well because the only thing on his team that the only things on his team that resist it are Latios and Shaman and hopefully by that point I would have taken them there in anyway. I mean if Terrakion's gone, I can just click Stone Edge. 
because the only other thing that resists that is Pangoro and, Ag and Agron, but again, hopefully I would have taken care of it. But anyway, that's a scenario. It, it was mainly for the Terrakion Rotom thing. I didn't want to give him an easy switch into an Earthquake. That's why I ran Aquatone instead. So that he'd rip, bring in Rotom thinking he would just, you know, completely avoid the Earthquake and I'd go for Aquatone and kill it, and kill it instead. And even if it lived, I'd kill it on the next turn because Aerodactyl's faster. Um, so yeah, that was Aerodactyl for week three. Next on the team is, was, Mega Absol. Now Mega Absol, heavy hitter, can do quite a few things. We've got Play Rough is there for Pangoro. We can outspeed, outspeed Pangoro all day, every day. So Play Rough's there to take it down. I think I count it and Pangoro does not live a Play Rough from a Mega Absol in any incarnation. I think maybe max HP, max defense could take one, but it wasn't well. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure without any defensive or HP investment, I could Oko Pangaro with a play rough with zero attack investment on Mega Absol. So that was nice. So we've got play rough for the Pangaro because that's a, that thing's a pain. Uh, we've got Mega Horn is there for the shaming and maybe the. Maybe the Latios, if we need it, I guess. Maybe, not really. So Mega Horn was mainly for Shaman. Uh, then we've got Sucker Punch and Knock Off for the Latios and the Mesprit. Now, the reason I've got Knock Off and Sucker Punch was because I didn't want to become too predictable with the Sucker Punch and allow Latios to set up with Calm Minds. Because set, it, Sucker Punch was my only dark type move. I don't really have much to hit it. It's going gonna, to... It's, it's gonna, just set up a common mind. I mean, yes, I've got Mega Horn, but Mega Horn was kind of situational, you know, it's only there because of Shaman. Um, so I'll put Knock Off on there as well, which gives us the option uh, extra of getting rid of items as well, so that's always nice. I did consider Night Slash, but then I thought maybe getting rid of items would be a bit better, so that's what I went with in the end. So yeah, Mega Outsaw, Adamant Nature, like I said, we had speed everything anyway, at least it's like Scarf Terrakion or something like that, or Scarf Latios. So I wasn't too worried about being out sped, but uh, yeah, that was Mega Absol for week three. The next one for the team for week three was Thunder Doggo, the Roku, coming again with, again, with the Aura Sphere. Um, so we've used Aura Sphere on this thing pretty much every time we bought it. This week it was for the Porygon Z. Because Porygon C, as I say, if unchecked, can be a pain in the backside because that adaptability try attack does actually hurt uh, unless you resist it or you know you're immune to it, which I wasn't going to be since Jellison was on the bench this week. Uh, I've got Thunderbolt and Volt Switch uh, for the nice electric type stab. Signal Beam is there for Shaman because they didn't want Shaman to be coming in and just eating up the electric hits, so I went with Signal Beam on that. It also hits Latios, which is nice because Latios also drinks up the electric type hits. And, as I've already said, we've got the Aura Sphere there for Porygon Z. It kind of hits Pangaro as well, which is nice. Um, Pangaro can be pretty bulky, especially with Assault Vest. Latios, again, can tank a hit or two as can Shaman, that's why I wanted to run the extra strength this week, I wanted the life orb, I almost ran the assault vest on this thing, so I thought, you know, he's got a few decent special hitters, maybe being able to tank one or two of those special hits with the assault vest would be a better idea, but in the end, I opted to go for the extra power that the life orb will grant us, so that was Thunder Doggo, the Roiku for week. Three. Now, the next mod on the team, and the final mod on the team this week, was our friend, Grasshopper the Minion Shadow. Now, sadly, sadly, he didn't get to do anything in week two. It was a, he unfortunately switched into an ice beam from a curum that he could not live, which was unfortunate. You know, it is what it is. So, I opted for a bulky Minion Shadow this week, because um, between Max Bulk and the Assault Vest, I was hoping that we could live. I believe I'd count it and we could actually take one Moonblast from a floor just. So, that was, that's why I'm running bulky. Um, again, he's got, he's got things like Pan, uh, Polygon Z as well, which I didn't really want to be switching into uh, 
try attack because it's probably going to outspeed us the next turn and just go for another try attack to kill us so that's kind of why I went for a bulky mind share this week to try and tank a hit and then be able to deal a heavy hit back um, I've just realised I think no yes no yes so I was kind of running oh, I've actually got the wrong set on this thing got the wrong set on the graphics you are too pro at this Jedi uh, give me a second I'll just call up the set that I was actually running it wasn't it wasn't that set on the screen clearly I've messed up on the graphics again because I'm clearly I'm far too good at the graphics game so this rep the set that I was actually running on the end show was uh, 248 I've got the EVs right the items right but I've messed up on the moves. I was actually running Stone Edge, Drain Punch, U-Turn, and Poison Jab. Now Stone Edge for the Rotom. Drain Punch is Stab and it hits the Porygon and the Pangaro. U-Turn kind of for the Mesprit and the Latios and to get out if I need to to bring something else in. Which kind of works better because we've got no speed investment. So we would be a, we would kind of be a slower U-Turn. So things like Latios would quite probably outspeed us, which would give me a slow U-turn out into something better, like Absol or Aerodactyl. And we've also got the Poison Jab on there to take on Florgius, but because I wanted something that could hit Florgius on the physical side, because Florgius is typically weaker physically than it is, especially unless of course you run like physically defensive Florgius, which I was fully expecting to be quite honest. So that was Mian Shao's set. Uh, again, apologies for the graphics. Uh, I'm just a derp. I am too. I'm, I'm too pro of the graphics. So that was my team for week three against Jim and the Meath Mammoth Swines. Uh, it was a good game, but I'll leave that for the next video, the battle video, which will be coming very, very, very soon, very, very soon. Um, so. Again, apologies for the lateness of these. I had an absolutely insane week last week. I was busier than I can put into words. And I had very little time for anything. Um, so yeah, apologies about that. But it's here now. Better late than never, they say. Better late than never. So, that was our team for week three of the Battle of Union against G Potato Jim and the Myth Mamma Swine. So I hope you guys are looking forward to the match. You've probably already seen it on Jim's end. If you haven't, then what are you doing with your life? Go over and check that out straight away. I will, of course, leave links to Jim and, of course, the Battle of Union in the description down below. So please be sure to check both of those out. Again, I do apologise for the lateness. Thank you for bearing with me. I do appreciate it. A button. Uh, so yes. Thank you for watching, take care of yourselves guys, and I will see you next time with the week 3 battle video. Ta-ta for now.